heard all across the United States, Canada, and around the world. This is the Bible Answer Man broadcast with Hank Hanegraaff. Hank is president of the Christian Research Institute. At CRI, our desire is to equip you not only to defend the historic Christian faith, but to become a winsome witness to a spiritually hungry but skeptical world, because life and truth matter. To learn more, or to find resources to help you grow in grace, call 888-7000-CRI or go online to equip.org. That's equip.org. And now, here's Hank Hanegraaff. Thank you very much, Randy, and this is a special edition of the Bible Answer Man broadcast. And as we get started with the broadcast today, I do want to once again commend your attention to the human advantage the Future of American Work in an Age of Smart Machines, a book by Jay Richards, also by Jay Richards, Money, Greed, and God. But The Human Advantage is a book that I feel Christians really need to read. It seeks to awaken and equip the believer so that we don't fall victim to the dangerous myths that are being peddled so incessantly, so embraced uncritically, so perilously embraced by millions of Americans in an age that has mindlessly chugged the toxic Kool-Aid of materialism. Christians just need to be able to defend a growing wave of attacks on human exceptionalism. Not only will the marvelous creation, the stunning complexity of the human body never be matched by any machine, but our embodiment was such a great idea that God took on embodied human nature himself in the incarnation. And what's more, God's power will ensure that through our resurrection, our bodies aren't just a temporary convenience. They are an eternal gift. Again, The Human Advantage by Jay Richards, available for those who support the ministry. And why are we constantly offering books? Part of the reason is the numbers of people who are not reading, reading the Bible or books in general, is staggering. I pointed this out on a previous broadcast. A full quarter of the population did not read so much as a single book in the past year. And yet reading is a life practice by which our minds may be renewed and transformed. In fact, I would go so far as to say that it is the principal tool through which God changes us. I think of Johann Kepler. He faithfully read the Bible. In fact, we might say he ferociously read the Bible. He consumed a wide variety of books, and he resolutely fixed his substantial talents on the book of nature, for through the book of nature, God spoke to him as a father speaks to a child. Now, of course, the book of nature is not for sale. Nor can you find the book of nature in any bookstore. It's as free as the air we breathe. It's as vast as the universe. And by reading it, you and I can experience God's, his invisible qualities, his eternal power, his divine nature. Johann Kepler, he, he read the book of nature just like Albert Einstein read the book of nature. And though he was neither a Christian theist nor an atheist, he read with, well, with an attitude of humility that corresponds to the weakness of our intellectual understanding of nature and the weakness of our own being. He saw himself, think about this, Einstein, he saw himself as as a little child that enters a huge library, a library filled with books in, in a variety of languages, the child knows someone must have written those books. 
It doesn't know how. It doesn't understand the languages in which the books were written. The child dimly suspects a, well, a mysterious order in the arrangement of the books, but doesn't know what that order is. And that, it seems to me, is the attitude of even the most intelligent human being towards God. Though Einstein rejected the personal God of the Bible, he revered the God who gives glimpses of himself in the library of nature, the one who reveals himself in the harmony of all that exists. For Einstein, library books were as wonderful as they were mysterious. And this he found intoxicating. The most beautiful thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the source of all true art and science. He to whom this, this emotion is a stranger who can no longer pause to wonder and stand wrapped in awe, well, is as good as dead. His eyes are closed. A child may still view a chrysalis with wonder or thrill at the emergence of a butterfly. <laughs> Too many of us simply yawn, blind to the wonders of the universe. We glance at the moon and we fail to grasp its significance for our survival. We order yet another glass of water and forget its uniqueness among the liquids. Or like virtually any other fluid, it would, it would freeze from the bottom up rather than from the top down. It would kill aquatic life, destroy the oxygen supply. It would make earth uninhabitable. We fail to grasp the gravity of gravity, were it infinitesimally weaker or stronger, the universe would not, I mean, could not support intelligent life. We swat in an ant without thinking to trace its path into the domain of the learned. Far better, said Solomon, to, to observe her ways and, and then become wise. We must ever remember that God has revealed himself in two books, the Bible and the book of nature. And the parallel between them is so complete, said Origen, that the person who is asking questions of nature and the person who is asking questions of the Bible are bound to arrive at the same conclusion. Luther said something very similar. He said that God writes the gospel not in the Bible alone, but in the trees and the flowers, in the clouds and in the stars. And the great American reformer, George Cheever, said that the man who can really, in living union of the mind and heart, converse with God through nature, finds in the material forms around him a source of power and happiness that's inexhaustible. Schiefer went on to say that the highest life and glory of humanity is to be alive unto God. And when this grandeur of sensibility to him and this power of communion with him is carried as the habit of the soul into the forms of nature, well, then the walls of the world become the gates of heaven. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow said something very similar. He, he, he described the book of nature as an old nurse that takes us upon her knee and says, here is a storybook my Father has written for you. Come wander with me in regions yet untrod, and read what is still unread in the manuscripts of God. My point here is that intimacy with the book of nature 
is directly linked to spiritual renaissance. I want to talk some more about that on the other side of the break, but again, I hope that I can inspire you in a small way to not only read the Bible, to read books, but to reacquaint yourself with the wonders, indeed the glories of the universe that God has given us to live within. For remember, this universe will remain. It will be recreated, it now groans in travail, but one day will be liberated from its bondage to decay. So this is a universe worth knowing, as is its maker. Again, the book that I want to intoxicate you with is A Human Advantage, available for those who support the ministry. Check it out on the web at equip.org. We'll be right back on the other side of the break with more of my comments on the book of nature. Stay tuned for that. In his new book, The Human Advantage, Jay Richards reveals what is really happening in the American economy. By dispelling myths about capitalism, greed, and upward mobility, Dr. Richards reveals how to rebuild a culture of virtue by capitalizing on the skills that are most uniquely human. Creativity, resilience, and empathy for the needs of others. To receive your copy of The Human Advantage, The Future of American Work in an Age of Smart Machines, call 888-7000-CRI or visit online at equip.org. We'll be back with more in just a moment from Hank Hanegraaff. With over half a million copies in print, Hank Hanegraaff's Bible Answer Books were born out of his many years of hosting the Bible Answer Man broadcast. He's taken his on-air answers to questions and chiseled them until only the gems emerge. Questions involving biblical interpretation, cults, science, ethics, apparent contradictions, and much more. This remarkable collection of concise answers is now even better. My goal, says Hank, is to take the complex and make it simple and memorable. Receive your copy of the complete Bible Answer Book Collector's Edition revised and updated as our thank you for your gift by calling 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support CRI's life-changing outreaches. 888-7000-CRI or visit equip.org. That's equip.org. Smart machines are reshaping our world and our future, but these machines will never be a substitute for what Dr. J. Richards calls the human advantage. Yet it is critical for the next generation of Christians to understand that in the future more and more jobs will be done by smart machines, and we must plan accordingly. The new book by Dr. J. Richards, The Human Advantage, will help you understand the increasing threat posed by artificial intelligence and show why the marvelous creation of the human mind and body can never be matched by any machine. To receive your copy of The Human Advantage, The Future of American Work in an Age of Smart Machines, call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support the Christian Research Institute's life-changing outreaches. 888-7000-CRI or visit us online at equip.org. Breaking the code of the book of Revelation has become an international obsession. The result has been rampant misreading of scripture, bad theology, and even bad politics and foreign policy. In the Apocalypse Code, find out what the Bible really says about the end times and why it matters today. Hank Hanegraaff argues that the key to understanding the last book of the Bible is the other 65 books of the Bible, not current events or recent history. The Apocalypse Code offers sane answers to some very controversial questions such as, what does it mean to take the book of Revelation literally? Who are the Antichrist and the Great Whore of Babylon? And what is the real meaning of 666? Order The Apocalypse Code by Hank Hanegraaff today. Available in soft cover, MP3 CD, or MP3 download from equip.org. Or call 888-7000-CRI. And now, 
Here's Hank Hanegraaff. Thank you very much, Randy. I'm talking about the uh, the wonders of reading, and we have, of course, been promoting the Human Advantage by Jay Richards. It is available for those who support the ministry. You can check it out on the web at equip.org. I'm also writing a book that I hope to be my magnum opus. Uh, it's titled Truth Matters, Life Matters More, Discovering the Authentic Christian Life. And some of what I'm talking about now, I'm including in my upcoming book. I'm talking about the intimacy with the book of nature, which is directly, as I said before the break, linked to spiritual renaissance. When we give into the power and presence of the Spirit, we encounter the hand of omnipotence in all of creation. It is resplendent in the stars. It reveals itself in the diversity of plants and trees. It roils in the rhythm of the waves. It resides in the mystery of the wind. Those who ignore the book of nature do so at their own peril. Spurgeon once said, that he found it exceedingly strange for one to claim to love God and yet be afraid to study the God-bearing book of nature. He bemoaned the mock spirituality of believers who are, are too heavenly to consider the heavens. What we need is a cleansing of the toxins an escape from light pollution, so as to see that the heavens declare the glory of God. Watch the eagle soar. Listen to the babbling brook. Consider the myriad flowers, the leaves. Climb the Everest of experiential knowing and allow the differentiated snowflakes to fall softly upon your eyelids. Open your eyes. Know that God is near. Einstein again. He was brilliant in so many ways, and he said to know what is impenetrable to us really exists, manifesting itself as the highest wisdom and the most radiant beauty which our dull faculties can comprehend only in their most primitive forms. This knowledge, this feeling, is at the center of true religiousness. Well, Einstein was only half right. Uh, on one hand, the mind who spoke and and trillions of galaxies leapt into existence is, well, it's impenetrable. It's inaccessible. On the other hand, he is eminent. Scripture affirms both his ineffability and his eminence. God is a God nearby. And, as Jeremiah said, he's a God far away. He's impenetrable in his essence. He's present in his energies. As such, reading the book of nature, well, it's tantamount to a para-Eucharistic practice. Para-Eucharistic in that it stands alongside the Eucharist as a means by which, by which we may experience the mystery of union with God. All that he has created is a sacred sacrament through which we may be mysteriously interpenetrated and indwelt. God's creative handiwork is replete with logoi, with little words that that speak to us as though through a mighty rushing wind. The tragedy is that while creation surrounds us with its present, we are far too much like the proverbial fish swimming in water and yet complaining of thirst. Perhaps, well, perhaps some wilderness therapy is in order. Wilderness therapy deepens our appreciation of the book of nature. It reacquaints us with its rhythms. It permits us to perceive our place in the purposes of God. It allows us to struggle with uncreated energy rather than struggling with our own. 
It disconnects us from the spirit of this age and reconnects us with the spirit of the ages. Of course, our greatest example is Jesus. He, he often withdrew to lonely places to experience union with the Father. John 2 withdrew to unpopulated places so as to remove the impediments and bear better witness to the light. Elijah, Elijah, after whom the ministry of John was patterned, likewise cried out from the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the paths of God. The noise of the city no longer pounding in their brains, they sensed God speaking in the sounds of silence. They encountered the ineffable in the mountain crags and the desert sands in the flight of the fearsome falcon, the glassy eye of the owl, the darting of the hummingbird, the beauty of the butterfly. They communed with God, and like the bush that burned, they were consecrated, but not consumed. It is in the wilderness that our anxious hearts may be quiet and know that He is God, in our apartness there, there's an intuitive knowing that he who is above and beyond is also within. I think of St. Gregory Palamas, who was the Archbishop of Thessalonica. He accentuated the paradox by saying he is both existent and non-existent. He's everywhere and nowhere. He has many names and He cannot be named. He's ever moving, and he is unmoved. Western minds tend to shun this kind of paradox, but not Palamas. God, he said, remains holy within himself, and yet he dwells holy within us, causing us to participate not in his nature, but to participate in his glory and in his radiance. This does not mean that we are united to God with respect to his essence, since with respect to his essence, God undergoes no participation. What this means is that those privileged to attain union with God are united to him with respect to his energy. And as the contemporary Orthodox theologian Callistus Ware has reminded us, The divine energies are not an intermediary between God and humankind, not a thing that exists apart from God. They are, on the contrary, God himself, God in action, God in self-revelation, God in dwelling his creation through his direct and unmediated presence. Well, the point of wilderness therapy is precisely that. It is to experience God's unmediated presence. Though he's ineffable in his essence, he is nonetheless eminent in his energies. And as such, we who are joined to the Lord are one spirit with the Lord. In the shimmering between light and darkness, we may well experience the vision the vision of Adam and Eve walking with God in the cool of the day. Lewis says this, If I find in myself a desire that no experience in this world can satisfy, the most probable explanation is that I was made for another world. And as Christian apologist Dan Story expressed it, and I'll make this the quote of the day, Wild nature is a privileged peak through earthly shutters to a garden of Eden reborn, a future paradise with all the joy and peace and unspoiled beauty of Eden and more in God's timing. The wilderness, indeed all of creation, will be transformed. The dim memory of Eden hovering in the recesses of our minds will someday become a living reality. And so in the meantime, 
we are to read. We are to read the Bible and experience the mind of God. We are to read books and engage minds He created in His image and His likeness. Read the book of nature with its myriad logoi, which in unison express the logos. Purge the toxins, cleanse the lenses. Let the shining begin. This has been a special edition of the Bible Answer Man broadcast made possible by all of those who stand shoulder to shoulder with me in the battle for life and truth. I thank you so much for your partnership in ministry. You're making a difference. We'll be back next time with more of the Bible Answer Man broadcast. In the meantime, you can stand with us prayerfully and financially through contact on the web at equip.org or by writing me at Post Office Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. So long for now. You've been listening to the Bible Answer Man broadcast with Hank Hanegraaff. Our mailing address is P.O. Box 8500, Charlotte, North Carolina, zip code 28271. To listen to the broadcast on the internet, visit equip.org, where you'll also find a wealth of information and resources to equip you. To talk to a resource consultant, call 888-7000-CRI. That's 888-7000-274. The Bible Answer Man broadcast is supported solely by listeners like you. We're on the air because life and truth matter. Smart machines are reshaping our world and our future. But these machines will never be a substitute for what Dr. J. Richards calls the human advantage. Yet it is critical for the next generation of Christians to understand that in the future, more and more jobs will be done by smart machines and we must plan accordingly. The new book by Dr. J. Richards, The Human Advantage, will help you understand the increasing threat posed by artificial intelligence and show why the marvelous creation of the human mind and body can never be matched by any machine. To receive your copy of The Human Advantage, The Future of American Work in an Age of Smart Machines, call 888-7000-CRI and make a gift to support the Christian Research Institute's life-changing outreaches. 888-7000-CRI or visit us online at equip.org.